<laughs> have you got your mobile? You got the chief's number? Yes, I have. Well, give it to me. What, 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 how? Just do you want me to get it up and then show it to you? There's one or two things are going to happen here. <laughs> the chief's either watching this, and because um, I'm doing this for a reason, because I can't do the next part if he's watching. Uh, he's either watching this and he's going to answer the phone or he's not going to answer it, or he's not watching and he's going to answer the phone or not answer it. So, there you are. we're hoping he's not watching the show and he answers the phone. I hope he doesn't answer. <laughs> I don't think Hello. he's got. <laughs> did he? Did he... Go, Jason. <laughs> Chief. Go. Oh, you should have talked. He's hung up on you. You dickhead. <laughs> did he answer the phone? He answered the phone. Hey. I don't reckon he'll answer this. Hello? Chief, it's your Hello? old child. Don't hang up, Chief. <laughs> You're on air. What? Who is this? <laughs> this is Sam. This is the Foss. Oh, piss off, mate. <laughs> Chief, you're on... <laughs> what? I'm with no you. ring. <laughs> what, will he... Will he uh, uh, why not? I'll give one more go. <laughs> Hello? Chief, it's Sam, you're on here. Don't hang yeah, up, Chief. I don't know who it is. Oh, oh no. <laughs> don't call back and lose the number, you flop. Oh. Chief! <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> if I'm you... ringing the Chief once more. No, nah, ring him in here, mate. Do you got something for Sam's mouth? Who wants me it... to ring the Chief once more? <laughs> Turned his phone off. Let's go to the next game. Oh. 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 All right. Hello, oh. Chief. Hello, Chief. Who is it? It's the Foss. You're on air on Nine, the Footy Show. You know what you help make famous. Aren't you working tonight? <laughs> Of course I'm working, that's why I'm telling you we're on air. Don't say I'm a dickhead or anything else stronger. On, what do you mean on air, you idiot? <laughs> well, what do you say? What do you mean on air, you idiot? <laughs> we're on air, you're on the tell, you're not on the... Can you come on the show for... Uh, Jim, who are you? <laughs> Chief, you've got me rattled, Chief. I'm all at Twitter. Can you come on the show sometime, Chieftain? My God, man, what is wrong with you? Senility finally grabbed you with both hands and shaking whatever... Tiny piece of common sense you had left completely out of your body. Thank you, thank you, Chief. <laughs> Is that a no? <laughs> I'd rather sit home and stick pins in my eyes, Sam. <laughs> well, we got him. He's yeah. What's wrong with you? Chief, they didn't think you'd answer. What is wrong with you, man? <laughs> Ask him who he thought it was Who before. did you think it was before when we rang? Some slog! <laughs> Welcome to Long Story Short. I've got the uh, the world famous Sam Newman, who was the star of the footy show for 25 years. He was the reason everyone tuned in. Now, Sam, for you, um, especially early uh, in the uh, the first five or six years, you had a great relationship with the chief, Jason Dunstall. He would come on the show and you had a weird connection, but there was a little bit of respect there, but it was also you love stirring each other up. So that's obviously something you must miss, hanging around the big chief. Yeah, I work with Chief on the radio uh, on uh, Triple M, and um, I, I, I think he gave me the name The Fossil, and I think I... He did. Uh, he did, because uh, uh, we used to have a, a little bit of banter on the radio before the game started uh, at the MC or wherever it was on Triple M, and uh, 
he used to drive a brown brown Volvo and he used to drive in and he used to listen and we used to chip away at him on air. I said, I wonder if the chief's listening to this. He said, that big bulky man behind the wheel of that little car, he looked like a circus clown driving one of those cars you can hardly get. So he'd come into the studio with a face like thunder knowing that we'd been taking the urine out of him. And uh, he said, listen, you, I can't actually mention uh, the words that he said, but he uh, words to this effect. He said, listen, you stupid fossilised old um, whatever. And... Um, <laughs> Uh, so, and then I think I, call, coin, I think I called him the chief because he was uh, designated as the temporary stand-in as the CEO of Hawthorne at one stage and he used to sit behind this big mahogany desk and I said he was like the chief of staff at the, uh, you know, so I think I coined yep. him the chief and he called me the fossil. But I had a lot of fun with the chief. He's a, a clinical, austere stolid man he's antisocial as you know and uh, uh, doesn't get on well with too many people unless he wants to and um, I always had uh, tremendous respect for the chief because I, I used to say this absolutely in the best possible way if you look at the chief I was watching um, <laughs> David Attenborough once over in Uganda and he was um, speaking about silverbacks uh, you know simians apes and I said chief you are a magnificent looking mammal. Do you know you actually look like a simian, a beast, a, a, a mammal? And he said, really? And I said, no, no, you think I'm taking the piss, but I'm not, Chief. You're a fine looking man. You have no neck. Your head goes straight into your shoulders. You've got a big long back, short little legs. You've got opposable thumbs. Uh, and the Chief uh, lapses into twice a year what most mammals do, or certainly elephants and chimps do. They... They, they, they enter in what's a thing called musk, where they get uh, sexually aroused and uh, 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 fluid comes out of their pores and around their genitals and it leaks into... Uh, and and that sometimes that happened to the chief when I'm playing golf with him. He would we'd be, be playing golf and he would be a lather of stuff around. I said, You're, you've come into musk, chief. Uh. He said, shut up. Boss. And sometimes when I'm playing golf, he'd just disappear on about the third or the fourth hole and... He'd just swing into the trees and gather and uh, get to the ninth hole and suddenly there he'd be with uh, winter berries and nuts and bamboo shoots. And, I'd, and if I was playing with people, I'd say, don't, just take no notes of the chief. He does that sometimes. And when it was windy, he'd look up at the trees, you'd think, shit, I should be in them. And he would invariably get up and he just felt at home. And uh, he was a very fine man, the chief, but uh, those little beady eyes and strong, as powerful. He could break a swan's wing with a blow of his nose. He was a huge, powerful man, but I love him. <laughs> love him. There was even uh, on the show at one stage, you were trying to encourage him to come back after, you know, having uh, a great yes. tussle with each other over a long period. But then you got on and you got, you put on the uh, the the – Gorilla uh, pants. Yeah, with the um, red with the, ass. The, the big backside. Yeah, big backside. And yep. it was 1 800 Uganda. That's, That's right. That's what you were wanting him to call. <laughs> That's right. And uh, we were trying to entice. I thought, oh, maybe he was in Musk at home, just in his bed sitter looking. And he thought, wow, look at that. There's uh, someone I'd <laughs> like to get on to. And I was hoping he would think it's me and um, uh, entice him. And because uh, the female, I, I, I did some research, the female simians or the female apes, when they are on heat, their ass goes bright red. And I thought, well, if I put a bright red uh, sort of a torso, a, 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 a costume on, it might excite him. And I've got a feeling he could have been sitting at home looking and thinking, holy mackerel, look at that. I'll rush in there and tip that man over. Uh, but he didn't. But we, uh, we, I think we rang him one day on air just to see if he would possibly come on. And uh, it was fraught with danger because uh, when it's live and there's no delay, you never know what people are going to say. But So you always have to warn them that you're on air and uh, take it, just pray to God that uh, they won't uh, upset the network or themselves or us in particular. Well, it didn't go so well because he kept hanging up on you. He had no idea who it was. And when he finally worked out, he couldn't believe that you were actually calling him whilst live on air. That's right, and I, I started to get a bit, uh, just a bit, <laughs> bit, bit nervous, and so I thought I'd <laughs> deflect, and I said, "Well, it wasn't my idea; it was James Brayshaw's." Jim, Jim, who is not a, not, a, not, a, not over courageous man, and as, yep. you know, jumps at shadows at the best of times. Speed born out of fear. So, absolutely, <laughs> and um, when I mentioned that it was uh, Jim's idea, the uh, Jim uh, uh, actually physically in front of us melted down behind the chair because he knew <laughs> that the chief was going to strangle him when he saw him. Beat the living like suitcase one of those, out of them. 
like one of those pilots in um, Flying High. Remember, they just That's melted right. in their chair. That's it. <laughs> whilst flying the plane. Hey, what about when you had the chief? He was doing pull downs on the show. Yes. You locked his hands in, and yes. then you <laughs> you virtually took off his hair. I cut his hair, and he'd be uh, uh, he'd be delighted if I did that these days because he's <laughs> as bald as a badger. Uh, remember, yep. I can remember him when he kicked 17 goals out at Waverley in that memorable match that I was at, and he had a, that shock of black hair, and I don't know where it's gone now. It uh, used to be all beach and waves, now it's just sand dunes, but it's, um, he's a very, very good-looking man. And a lot of, in fairness, a lot of silverbacks don't have a lot of hair. They're very, very narrowly tucked. Uh, if you have a look at one closely, you have a look at a uh, geographical... Um, uh, uh, ge- ge- uh, you know, if you have watched National Geographic on television, you'll see that uh, simians and big uh, silverbacks don't have a lot of hair. And and do you ever think if you actually called him today, he would answer and have a conversation with you, or just straight to answering machine? Yeah, I got a feeling he wouldn't speak to me. No, um, he's, uh, he's he's not a warm man. I, I like him because <laughs> because he is uh, he, he has this in tremendous superiority complex, which can be disconcerting if you let it get to you. But uh, if you know who you're dealing with, and he uh, he looks at you uh-huh. through that quizzical, big, broad, flat nose, he, yeah, like he is he is he is the dead ringer. I'm, in fact. I don't know why they don't put him in a cage in the zoo occasionally around grand final time. And they would make a fortune if people just came by and looked at him. Uh, and if he's watching would. this, he'll come around, he'll actually set fire to the place I live in. Well, hopefully yours and not mine. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm asking the questions. You're telling us all about him. No, we love him. Hey, he we was do. the, the best, ca- best captain I ever had. Yep. And uh, I the didn't. Chief. No, he was uh, a magnificent man. He is a very good man. Like he was him. the only captain that actually didn't like talking to his teammates, but I loved him. I loved the yeah. chief. Well, it was a tradition because Don Scott did that as well. <laughs> hey, Sam, thanks for talking to us on Long Story Short okay. about the great chief. The chieftain.